If you have your Bibles, look in the Old Testament. Hold on. Look in the New Testament. Have y'all ever wondered why we have two halves? I mean, we got, we got two halves here. One God, but two halves. I mean, what is this? Before and after? Kind of. Kind of. The word testament means to have a will or a bequest. It is in the, in the uh, Greek translation, it's the word covenant. That's a word we're going to look at today a lot. Covenant means to come together or to agree. In the, the Hebrew, it would mean to bind or to bring an obligation, a binding obligation. Now, that there's someone that I know um, did an absolute wonderful job with the definition of this. His, his name is Malcolm Smith. So can I just give him all the credit and just read his definition of what a covenant is? He said a covenant is an abiding, it's a binding unbreakable obligation between two parties. It's based on unconditional love, sealed by blood, and a sacred oath that creates a relationship in which each party is bound by specific undertakings on each other's behalf. It is a relationship which can only be broken by death. Now, it's not a contract. It's covenant. A contract, somebody just writes it up and it can be, it can be rearranged, it can be broken, it can be um, renegotiated. Uh, contracts come and go. But a covenant is for a lifetime. And a covenant really is to bless both parties with unconditional blessings. And there is, in the Old Testament, that picture of covenant. By the way, it's all through the Old Testament. There's always a representative to come and to represent the parties and help them come together and have this covenant. He's selected to help them in the covenant making. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says this, For there is one God... And one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. He's the mediator, which means he's the, the go-between. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 says this, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now, he's said in Timothy, he's the mediator, the go-between. Now he's the advocate, the intercessor. One who acts, get this now, as a guarantee. Guarantee. In the book of Hebrews, and, and Hebrews is written to the Hebrews, to the Jews, so it has all the flavor of the Old Testament in it. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, it says this, but now... He has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator, get this now, of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. There is the old covenant, the Old Testament, but there's also the fulfillment, really, which is the new covenant, the New Testament, because Christ came and made it alive for us. In chapter 9, in verse 15 of Hebrews, it says this, And for this reason, he, that is Christ, is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death. For the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. And in chapter 12 of, of Hebrews, it says this, Verse number 24, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. The problem is, is that when you look in the Old Testament, you're not going to 
see it translated covenant very much. But there's a word that's there that represents covenant in the Old Testament 248 times. But when they translated it, the old translations would, would translate it mercy. Now, in the newer translations, they translate it in different ways. They would translate it as a steadfast love, an unconditional love, a unfailing love, a covenant love, or sometimes they would just translate it loyalty. That's what God was trying to say to us. They really didn't know how to explain the very nature of God and how He came and did all this for us. So they just said, knowing who we are, mercy. Mercy. Now, grace is what God gives you that you don't deserve. Mercy is what you do not receive, but you really do deserve it. And aren't you grateful that a covenant God who comes into this bartered relationship with us, who did it all on His behalf. He did it all. He comes and makes it happen for us, not because we deserve it or earn it, but because He loves us with an everlasting love. This word in the Old Testament that is translated mercy or covenant love is the word hesed. Hesed. It's actually translated in the New Testament as well. But here's the thing about it. It means not just the act of a, of a, of a covenant like a contract. It's, it's not a contract. So it, it's a living thing. It's a living thing. That means that the Word has action in it. God's covenant with us is not just talk. It's action. It's not just a a word that you can say, well, I've got this, so I'm good. No, it's an active part of God wanting to bless you in your life. Are you okay with that? Do you want that? Do you need that? Are you grateful that He loves us with an everlasting love? Are you are you grateful that in the fallen condition that we're in, God comes through to take us where we are and lift us to a higher plateau that we could have never reached on our own? So this action word in covenant, this mercy, it brings, it means His strength. It brings His strength. Now He's omnipotent. <clears throat> he has all power. Forgive me. I got some of the yuckiest tasting stuff in the world. <laughs> I'll be speaking in tongues here in just a moment. <laughs> he is omnipotent and he has all power. Listen to me. He brings all of his power to this to show us that he is able whatever we face. Whatever we face, we have a covenant God that's there. Also, not only strength, but steadfastness. I love this facet of it because it means he's infinitely reliable. He's constant and he's unchanging. And then also we see the word not only strength and steadfastness, but the word that we know so very well, love. I wrote this down in my notes. Heartwarmed generosity not because any other reason other than He's just generous to us. Wanting to love on us and bless us. Devotion. Not obligation. Just a desire. So it's love with His grace and His mercy. Now, church, let me, let me bring home a point that I think is very important. This is not an equal partnership, us and God. He's got it all. We're broken sinners. We're in need. God doesn't need anything. 
Matter of fact, he doesn't even, he didn't need a friend like us. He didn't need a relationship like us. He is infinitely complete in himself. He lacks nothing. <clears throat> it just hurts, Jode. Um, <clears throat> I apologize. My, my throat, I, I have, I'm two weeks into this treatment and my throat is just raw. But four years ago, I missed Resurrection Sunday in this time because of COVID. I'm not going to miss it again. All right. I'm going to be here. I'm going to bring the best that I have that God's given me. I just want y'all to know that, that God saw us in brokenness, in sin, in rebellion, and, and, and there was nothing we could do to make him love us, but yet he reaches down and says, I love you anyway. He gave us everything. He freely chooses to save us. No demand placed upon him whatsoever. He just chose to give us this. Now, in the Old Testament, the word love is always the word eros. We understand that as um, a sensual love, a love from the eyes. So when you see Eros love, it's because you see something, you see beauty in it, and you say, oh, I just love this. I just love this because of how it makes you feel, right? Now, if you see something that you think is below your standard or you consider it ugly, you just don't like that. And you just don't want anything to do with that. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I went to church one day, sat in the back. My, my niece was sitting beside me. And uh, I looked up in the choir. My mom was in the second row of the choir, but I didn't see my mom because I looked on the first row and there was this beautiful blonde girl in the first row. I can say this in church, can't I? And the Spirit of God began to talk to me. Not really. <laughs> Eros began to talk in me because I said, this girl is so beautiful. And she just shined. Y'all know what I'm talking about? She just had a glow about her. She just shined about her. And I married her. Amen? That was my wife. That was my wife. And, and, and my dad said when he married us, he said, I, 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 I just felt like this was all God's plans for y'all two to get together and to be there. And to that I say, amen. Now, I didn't talk to her before I had Eros. I saw beauty in her. Now, I have found out the more I know her, the more beauty I see in her and the more grateful I am for it. Amen. And, and, and I'm not the same way that I was. I, that was 50 pounds ago. Amen. And, and, and I had more hair. And I was kind of athletic, kind of athletic. And she <clears throat> was a size four. She was 97 pounds. And she had that bright smile that she has. I let y'all in on a secret. We've changed. but I still love her. It's not just I love them because all the beauty that, that benefits me. No. There's something deeper that's there. But that's all they knew in the Old Testament. That's the, that's the word that they used. If they thought it was below their standard, they didn't want to have anything to do with it. If they looked at something, they said, well, that, just, that person's just bad. I don't have to love them. They don't bring beauty to my life. I don't, I don't need that in my life. That's all they had. But that's not what hesed is. Covenant is something deeper. Covenant comes from the, the, the word, who you are. <clears throat> you don't have to earn something or deserve something. You just get to receive it. Kind of like in a marriage contract, like Lynn and I. When we made those pledges to each other, we said, maybe y'all did too, for better, say it, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness, and in health. 
as I can't hardly talk now. Right? To love and to cherish as long as you both shall live. That's covenant together. I take you. I accept you. I give to you. All that I am is yours. And all that you are is mine. That's what God did for us. If you have your Bibles in Luke 18, would you flip over to Luke 18? Jesus told a parable that I, I just love. I just love this parable. Because it, it, it talks about His covenant love different from our seeing beauty and judgment in our love. In Luke 18, <clears throat> verse number 9, the Bible says this. He spoke this parable, parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Oh, they were righteous. That's what they, that was their standard. And they, when they looked at themselves, they said, I'm righteous. And they despised others. You see, they said, if you don't meet my standard, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I, I will love the ones that, that are like me. I will love the ones that help add value to me. But if you're of no value to me, I don't want anything to do with you. <clears throat> it, 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 it's just hard and it's just difficult, but, but you can go away. And they would look down upon. Listen to this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. That meant they had a heart's desire and they go to the temple to worship Jehovah God. And now they are communicating, they're sharing their heart. They're sharing who they really are. One was a Pharisee that was a religious person. That was a person who was set apart for the teaching and the keeping of Scripture. That They should have been the very best representation of what God's Word says. So we see this person, a leader in the religious community, <clears throat> and the other was a tax collector. This was someone who was considered a sellout. This is someone who was considered one who only cared about themselves. A thief. One who could charge any amount that they wanted and, and they would pay the tax, but they could charge whatever they wanted and they could keep the rest. This was considered a low life. Nobody wanted to have a personal relationship with a tax collector, they were below your standard. So we got this religious person who, who's supposed to be the fullness of all that, they, that is God. They're coming. And then there's this tax collector. Verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Yeah, he, he was praying with himself because the kind of prayer he prayed was about him and not about God. You know, sometimes I, I wonder how God puts up with us and hears our prayers. When we're, all we care about is ourself, what we want, what we think. And God, if I could just change your viewpoint to, to agree with mine, we'd get along great, you know. So he's standing so everyone could see him and he's praying. I'm not sure how much God was listening, but here's prayer. God... I thank you that I am not like other men. Well, la ti da. I mean, he, he really <clears throat> gets up every day and said, Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Right? I can't wait to look in the mirror. I get better looking each day. Y'all ever heard this? To know me is to love me. I must be one sweet man. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble, but I'm doing the best that I can. Y'all ever heard that? This Pharisee, oh, I'm so grateful I'm not like these other men. He says, <clears throat> they're extortioners, unjust, adulterers, 
or even as this tax collector. He sees himself and says, I'm so much better than the extortioners. I'm so much better than these unjust people. These adulterers, though I'm sure he was not faithful to his God, or even as this tax collector. Could you imagine coming to the place of God and looking down upon someone else because they didn't meet your standard? So he gives his standard. I fast twice a week. God's probably saying, you could have had a bologna sandwich. It would have done you much better. I give tithes of all that I possess. God's like, I own everything. What do I need with your money? I'd rather have a heart. But then look in verse 13, and the tax collector, this low life, this one that everybody looked down upon, this traitor, this thief, standing afar off, not feeling worthy, would not so much as to raise his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast, knowing that it was not him, knowing that there was really no value, there was nothing that, that would make the God of the universe hear his prayer. But listen to his prayer. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God has said, that's the word. Be merciful. Hesed, God, I come for your covenant love, your steadfast, strong love, your promised love that could even love me, that can see me and see value. Nobody else sees value in me. One of the things that I'm seeing today is a world that is filled with arrows. A world that is filled with what they chasing after what they consider beauty and brings them pleasure. <clears throat> but yet, God doesn't look at the outside. But he looks at your heart, a humble and a contrite heart, one who is so down because of his sin, he beats his chest, knowing that he's not worthy, one who doesn't feel like he can even look up to God, but he said, I, I, I'm God, I'm, I, I, can I have your unfailing love, your promised love, your covenant love? Could you love someone even like me? I have nothing to offer God except my brokenness. I, I can't give you my resume on why you should love me. It's a short resume. I can't talk to you about all the things and all the reasons. And, and, and when you look at me, you say, Brian doesn't really have that much to offer. And you're right. But what I have is who he is. Because all that I am and all that I ever will be is loved by the Almighty God. Because he found me where I am. It made me what I could never be on my own. A child of the King. Loved. I love this word now. Adored. My granddaughter's here today. I got a clue for you. She's beautiful. Y'all should have said amen to that. Amen. And she is, she just means so much to me. I got her up this morning. I said, come here. And she sat in my lap, got me a big hug. And I said, oh, this is so good. And I wonder, she doesn't have to do one thing for me to love her. Because she's mine. Pops. Amen. Amen? Maybe 
We just need to crawl up into the lap of Almighty God and not tell Him why He should just love us, but just tell Him, I'm just so grateful that you love me. Look what it says here. I hope you hear this in your heart. He said, <clears throat> verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. The religious guy didn't get it. But the one who everybody else looked down upon, God reached him there. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Jeremiah 31.3 says, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, Hesed, I have drawn you. 1 John John was the one that had the nickname from Jesus called the Beloved. He writes in his epistle, he says, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Y'all know that? Do you know the love God has for you? Do you feel that love? God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God. And God, come on now, in Him. What He gave me was the covenant promise that I belong to Him. And He now abides in me. If we could wake up to understand the value of the gift, the covenant, the sealing of the Holy Spirit that comes to abide in us and live in us when we repent of our sins and come to Him, not because of how good we are, but because of the greatness of Jesus Christ who went to the cross of Calvary, who paid the penalty, shed His blood to be the covenant, to pledge the oath, to give of His love. And we have all this in Him. And yet, the world today does what the world in that day did. They look on Christ with arrows. Isaiah says about the Christ, he had no beauty in himself. Yet his love drew people to him. But because he didn't meet their standards, those Pharisees, like the one in the parable, didn't love Jesus. They hated Him. Because they didn't see the beauty. They saw the beauty in themselves. And the world today is fixated on self-love rather than a godly love. And they try to build themselves up and show themselves off as beautiful. If y'all haven't figured this out, everything in this world falls away. Everything is wood, hay, and stubble. Y'all have a good day? I felt pretty good yesterday. Got my tractor back. It was running good. You know what I did? I bush hogged. Now I'm wore out. Not very smart, is it? You have a good day and you feel like doing some things and you go do some things and my goodness, we pay for it the next day, don't we? Not too smart. Have y'all looked in the mirror lately? We aging, aren't we? 
There's that group of people that says, oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. But there's some of us that just says, I just can't believe anybody loves me. But I'm grateful that they do. If it's in this world, it's going to fall away. But if God puts His stamp of love on it, it will abide forever. I pray that you walk into that covenant love that God has for you. Don't reject God's everlasting eternal love.